What's we cooking? Some uh, fishies. Some fishies. And what are you putting in the fishies, Tommy? Shit bag. I don't know what that is, but this is Basil. He's already a better chef than me. He's only three. <laughs> We're almost finished entertaining. I desperately need a gave. And then I think we'll have a look at AI. Oh, AI, hmm. It's amazing and has certainly reached the point now where it actually is useful from a day-to-day -day point of view. As people with Teslas who use autopilot know or anyone that's used Google, probably a few of those around the place. So in its most basic form, what is it that AI actually does. What does it mean? Well, it means artificial intelligence, but I think that's actually a, probably a bit of a misnomer because it's not so much something which is intelligent as something which is designed to self-optimize. And through that self-optimizing, it solves problems that would otherwise be very difficult for human beings to solve. For example, trying to work out what it is you're planning on searching for when you've only typed in three or four letters. That one is crazy, I swear. I, you know, that might not, might not actually be artificial intelligence. That might actually be Google running some sort of new psychic chip. Why don't we have a look at a quick example of uh, a basic neural net and how that works. Give this a wipe. So in our neural network, we will have two input nodes, one output node, and three hidden nodes. Every one of those green nodes has got a value, and every one of the red connections has got a weight. And initially, you just set the red connection weights randomly and you put your inputs into the inputs and they get times to buy the weights. And then that then flows on to the next node. We use this neural network to calculate an example. Let's say your exam results based on how much revision you did in the last week and how many hours sleep you had the night before. So let's say you got six hours sleep the night before and in the week before you'd done 20 hours of work. So then you'd have your weight one. So then you'd have your weights and it would all get times by that. So here you'd have weight one times six and weight four times 20. Those would get added up and go past this one, which would be weight seven. Can you see what I'm doing? And then here again, you'd add it up again. So you go weight seven times that answer, weight eight, weight nine. And then that would be your answer. Except it wouldn't. There is no way that you would get the right answer because all of these weights were just set randomly. So what you do is usually you use something called backpropagation, which is where you take a bunch of known examples and that's your training data set. So let's say I did six hours sleeping the night before and 20 hours over the uh, over revision over the previous week. And that gave me an answer of 75. So you work this example through and the answer comes out here as 100. The difference between 75 and 100 is an error of 25. You carry that back, working out how much of the error 
comes from different nodes, adjusting the weights to minimize that error, and you basically do lots and lots of iterations. It is a very slow process, training a neural network. But the idea is that you've constructed something in software that will learn from the training data set that you give it, and then once you uh, give it some new results that you don't know the answer to, it will then come up with a prediction. And actually these things work extremely well. There are many, many different kinds of artificial intelligence but they all basically work on that same principle in that you are taking something and constructing a mathematical system which will enable it to learn how to solve the underlying problem without you having to tell it how to solve that problem. And they're all very clever, but none of them are in any way intelligent the way a human being is intelligent. It's just, it's not that kind of thing. It is fascinating, and it's only going to be a matter of time before it is, you know, doing everything all around us. Because intelligent tools just enable you to do so much more. And they're not really doing anything that the sort of periphery, if you like, of the human brain um, isn't doing. So, in other words, they basically work like, you know, like when you want to learn something, they work like the learning experience you have when you don't really understand how you're learning something. So not that experience you get when you're sitting down and the teacher is telling you 2 plus 2 equals 5. Ooh, did I say that? So not that experience that you have when the teacher is telling you 2 plus uh, 3 equals 5 but, and you're thinking, okay, so that equals five, and you're going, right, oh yeah, no, okay, I see how that works, not that experience. The kind of learning they do is the kind of learning that you use to learn to ride a bike. You know, you don't really understand how you're learning it, it just sort of, you just do. That's the kind of learning that AI at the moment works using. So, I hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post and found it interesting. Um, it's a bit of a heavy subject, AI, but it is something which is going to be increasingly around us, and I think it's quite helpful just to have a sort of rough idea as to what these self-optimizing algorithms are all about. So, I will see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye.